Welcome to Session 7, Bible Studies for Life. Today we began a brand new section. We're in this section called All In, A Life of Commitment. It's all about being committed and the commitment that, that Christ has to us and the commitments that we make to Him and the commitments that we make to one another and, and to ourselves and to God, to, the, to His Word and to the church. So uh, excited about this study. We're going to be looking at a lot of different passages from different books and kind of skipping around in some different places. Uh, but the the overriding, overarching theme of this is commitment and being committed, giving our all, all of who we are. And and of course, that begins when with Christ's commitment to us. We give all of ourselves to him because he gave all of himself to us. He did not. He does not ask something of us that he has not given to us already. He's already done this work for us. And so we're going to look this week at uh, Romans chapter 5, a couple of verses. And I'm just going to tell you, we could just spend weeks in Romans chapter 5. What an amazing passage. And so we're going to try to hit some of the high points of this passage uh, and only going to skip through a couple of little different places of it, okay? But here, verse 6 through 8, For while we were still helpless... At the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. Uh, okay, this is us. We're, we're the helpless ones. Okay, that, that's you and me. We're helpless. We can do nothing for ourselves. We have no power and no ability to save ourselves. Why not? Because we are ungodly. We are the opposite of godly. Okay, when you're lost, there's no, no semblance, no... no um, a remnant of God in you, you have the you have the image of God that you're created in and, and this God-shaped hole in your soul, but God's not there. We are ungodly. We act in ungodly ways. We are helpless to save ourselves. He says, while we were still helpless at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. Let's not lose this whole thing. And uh, I may not even get through the first slide, but, but this whole thing, is built around the death of Christ, and let's not lose um, a picture in our minds, in our hearts, in our souls of what it means that Christ died. He gave all. He gave all. He died for us. He gave completely. There was no holding back. He gave. He gave everything that could be given. The Son of God, God incarnate, died on a cross for us, for the ungodly. For rarely will someone die for a just person, though for a good person, perhaps someone might even dare to die. But God proves his own love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Again, this is us. We're the sinners, the helpless, the ungodly sinners. That's who we are, helpless, ungodly sinners. He says, and I love this because Paul's kind of laying out this, you know, rarely does someone die for a just person. That means because there's not a lot of people that deserve someone to die for them. Okay. He says, for a good person, maybe somebody might die. I think when we think about this, really, we think more of uh, people die for a cause, right? They die for their country, which is a dying for a cause, for a belief in a cause. Right? Or we die to save someone that we love. Right? We give our lives. And, and you see these stories often. I read just this past week a story of someone who jumped in a river to save their child. And they ended up giving their own life. The child was saved, but they lost their life saving their child. This is dying for that person. Right, Being willing to give your life. Okay, That happens on occasion. Right? But, but let me tell you, if you're, if you're there at the edge of the river... And, and you see um, this sorry person that everybody knows is a convicted murderer, rapist, horrible person, right? Floating down the river to his death. Ain't nobody going to jump in the river. Well, see you, you know, too bad. I'm going to give my life for that person. I mean, that's the way we are, right? But God proves his love for us in that while we are helpless, ungodly sinners... That's who we are. Christ died for us. That's love, right? That's great love for us. That's total sold out commitment to us. We are helpless, ungodly sinners. That's who we are. 
That's who we are without Christ. Helpless and godly sinners. We are not the, the picture of the person on the, on the magazine that somebody says, I'll give my life for that person. We're not. Okay, don't, don't have any misgivings about who you were before Christ saved you. You were just like me. We were helpless, ungodly sinners. That's who we were. And while we were those people, Christ died for us. While we were that, that's when Christ died. Knowing who we were, Christ died for us. We think of all those sorry people that sent Jesus to the cross. We think of those sorry soldiers that, that whipped him and the ones who, who held him down on that cross and nailed that, those, those nails into his wrist and into his feet and, and then picked that cross up and stuck it into the ground, jarring his body and, and, and ripping uh, his tendons out of his wrist and, and tearing his body up and then thrusting the sword, I mean the, the spear into his side and gambling for his clothes as as uh, priests and, and Levites laughed about him and made fun of him and mocked him and, and jeered him and, and cheered on his death. We think of all those people and Christ died. He was dying for them too. That was his love for them. He died for them there. And that was us. That was us. We're helpless, ungodly sinners. That's his commitment to us. For if while we were enemies, it's worse, we're enemies. It, it doesn't let up. We were enemies. We were reconciled to God through the death of his son. We were enemies. We were on the other side and we got reconciled by the death of his son, the death again, the death of Christ, the full giving of life. There was not, there's no uh, mythology to this, okay? There's no... Um, um, appearance of dying, which is what I talked to a Muslim one time, and they said, oh, he just appeared to die. He didn't really die. There's not, no, he died. If we were reconciled to God through the death, how much more, having been reconciled, will we be saved by his life? And not only that, but we rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received this reconciliation. Paul uses this word in a couple of places in his letters, here in Romans and Ephesians and Colossians. He uses this word, reconciliation to be brought back into right relationship. We were enemies. We were ungodly, helpless sinners, right? Enemies. And God brought us back into relationship because his commitment to us, his love for us was so great that Jesus gave his very life for us so that we might have an opportunity for salvation. That's how great his commitment is to us. He gave his life so that we could be made right what reconciled means to be made right to be brought back into right relationship full commitment because we were in a terrible place right okay last part of this uh, passage we'll look at so then as through one trespass there is condemnation for everyone so also through one righteous act there is justification leading to life for everyone for just as through one man's disobedience the many were made sinners, so also through the one man's obedience the many will be made righteous. Okay, this is the contrast between Adam and Jesus, uh, the second Adam. Okay, Adam's sin brought us into this life, this place of sin where we're all sinners. Now, listen, you're not condemned and I'm not condemned because of Adam's sin. We're condemned because of our own sin. We've got enough on our own. We, we don't need to lay this at Adam's feet, right? No, it's all Adam's fault. Well, look, we've sinned on our own, right? We've chosen our own path, but, but this brought condemnation. We were in that place where we are condemned because of our sin, and yet because of the righteous act of Christ giving all, laying his life down for us, we are justified. That is just as if we'd never sinned. It brings us to life, right? We're made righteous. Now, I love this phrase, we're made righteous. Not that we are righteous, we're made righteous, okay? I am not. I am a helpless, ungodly sinner, an enemy of God. That's who I am until Christ's act of giving his life for me and gives me the offer of salvation in which I am made righteous. He makes me righteous because of his righteous blood shed on the cross. That's why I'm righteous. That's the only way you can be righteous because on our own, we're helpless, right? We can't get there. Just as through one man's disobedience, through, through Adam's sin, many were made sinners, so also through one man's obedience, through, through the one man Christ being obedient, we have the opportunity to be made righteous. 
we have that opportunity because of his sacrifice for us, his commitment to us, his commitment to you. We can be made righteous. Boy, one person can make a difference, especially when that one person is the son of the living God. He makes a difference. Hey, thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful to you. God bless you as you continue studying and growing in your walk with the Lord. Subscribe to our channel on YouTube. Follow us so you get a notification every week uh, when the videos come up. We'll see you next time.